Good morning, Colorado. You're listening to The Daily Sunup. The Daily Sunup podcast is a conversation with the Colorado Sun. See our trust indicators at coloradosun.com slash ethics. It's Tuesday, October 15th. Today, we're highlighting the recent SunFest panel on artificial intelligence, which continues to develop in Colorado even as tech companies work with local officials to balance policies that aim to protect consumers yet seem like a threat to innovation. Before we begin, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Pinnacle Assurance, Colorado's leading provider of workers' compensation insurance. Pinnacle provides caring protection that Colorado businesses can rely on as they expand across the country. From finance to robotics and Arizona to Orlando, Pinnacle's nationwide coverage goes wherever Colorado businesses grow. Now, let's go back in time with some Colorado history. In 1906, Japanese immigrant laborers built the Crystal River and San Juan Railroad, linking Placida's coal mines to Colorado's marble quarry. This 10-mile track spurred marble's growth, allowing its pure white stone to be used in projects statewide and globally. Discovered in 1873, the marble attracted interest in the 1880s, but lacked transportation. The railroad removed this barrier, fueling a boom during the City Beautiful movement. Yule Creek marble adorned landmarks like the Lincoln Memorial and the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. World War I and the Great Depression led to the quarry's closure in 1941. It reopened in 1990 and now supplies a decorative and monument stone around the world. Before we continue, AARP Colorado empowers older people to choose how they live as they age. From making Colorado communities more livable and age-friendly to supporting family caregivers, AARP Colorado is a wise friend and a fierce defender. Visit aarp.org co for more info. Next, our future story. Hi, this is Tamara Chung at the Colorado Sun, and I am solo today. Um, because it seemed like a good day to share a recent recording from our SunFest event where I helped moderate a panel discussion on artificial intelligence policy and businesses in California. Um, at the session, I was joined by Amy Bika from the Colorado Governor Polis's office, Suma Nalapati from the city of Denver, cap- venture capitalist Adam Burroughs, and a couple of local founders. Um, You know, I chose a topic because AI is a hot topic to talk about in technology these days, you know, because of companies like OpenAI and ChatGPT. But it's also a big topic because of policies being covered and considered at the state and federal levels. You know, I was able to squeeze in a question about Colorado's own Senate Bill 205, which passed last spring. It was a pretty controversial bill. I think I've talked about it on the podcast before. You know, it aimed to put guardrails on technology companies and their use of AI when it comes to consumers. The bill, you know, it it aims to protect consumers. And yet after the bill passed and was signed into law by Polis himself, the administration seemed to have second thoughts about what happened. And after, especially after 200 technology executives opposed the new law. So that bill is now getting reworked in a task force. And um, the next meeting is actually next Monday. But uh, for now, let me let me share about 10 minutes of the recording with you. And you can also find this online on our YouTube channel. I, you know, I will say, I don't think there's anyone who would say the legislation is great and perfect as it stands. So I think that's one thing that that's just clear. And also um, that it would be great if there was federal legislation. And I, I just came back from two days with the National Governors Association on, on AI and everybody's looking to that federal level. But, you know, it's slow and it's not going to be here anytime soon. And so, you know, what, what do you do in the meantime? So I do think Colorado has always been on the, the forefront of these kind of technology topics. And, you know, of course, sometimes that, that forefront comes with taking a few hits. Um, there's also definitely a goal of, you know, if there was federal, that would be it. And then we would not be trying to do anything differently because I think it'll be a nightmare for any tech company to have to deal with 50 different state legislations, right? How would you even manage? But I think it's as much a signal to the federal, Hey, we need to do something. So yes, the intent of it is for consumer protection and to ensure, you know, that there is, uh, a place to go if there's bias, you know, in, in your, uh, in your AI. 
Are there issues with the language and some of the computational limits that are in it and, um, you know, kind of the vagueness of high risk and consequential decisions? Absolutely. So there's a task force. I don't know if you have that slide up, but um, I did put a put a website here. Um, so there has been a task force that's been established to modify the language before it goes into effect for 2026. There's about, uh, I think about 20 members on that. Um, our CIO, David Enninger from OIT is part of that, but they're open meetings. And, you know, I would encourage anybody who's following this topic to, to please listen to them. Um, I do think the goal of everybody in that room there is to make sure that we have appropriate um, protections where needed and, and make the changes needed too. So um, other than that, I'm willing to <laughs> well, feel, to feel what comes next. <laughs> I, I'm hoping Adam can chime in here. Because you, opinion, yeah. <laughs> well, you, I, I'm you, not going to hold back. You uh, were part of that letter. And yeah. uh, what, what, what was really wrong, at least from, you know, yeah. why, why did you guys come out with that? Well, and, and I will say like, so both, you know, Governor Polis, uh, Attorney General Phil Weiser and Senate Majority Leader Rodriguez all signed this letter too, where we, you know, they basically said, hey, we agree, here are the things that need to get corrected in the law specifically. And so hopefully those will, are what will actually happen. Um, but from our perspective, right, we are always, and a bunch of other people in the community, like we, we in Colorado Tech have a bit of a chip on our shoulder because we don't get a lot of respect. We're like the Rodney Dangerfield of tech ecosystems. You know, like PitchBook had Colorado venture capital deals and dollars, number five in the country the last two quarters. So that's after the big four tech market, like coastal tech markets. So we have, but whenever I'm, I'm out every day, we're out talking Colorado, Colorado, we're, the, we're, we're great. We're on the rise. And nobody believes us in the Valley. They're like, oh, I didn't know that. Wow, really? Oh, wow. And I'm like, yeah, look at the data, right? Because we don't, what's great about Colorado, we don't do a lot of ch chest puffing. Like other markets like Austin, for example, everybody's like, really? You guys are bigger than Austin? Wow, no idea. So for us, we're doing this. And then this law comes out that's super vague, super vague, where you read that, you're like, oh my God, like AI is dead in Colorado, like in, in a very broad interpretation of it. Every single company who's doing anything with AI might be subject to this law, have to go through all these, these government bureaucracies and consulting fees. And they're like, oh my God, this just shuts down innovation. And a lot of venture cat, we heard from a lot of prominent VCs and technologists on the coast that are like, when I heard all this great stuff about Colorado, what? <laughs> you guys are closed for business. And we're like, no, 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 no. It's going to all get worked out. It's all reasonable. And it will get worked out and everybody's reasonable. But that was one of the issues with kind of issuing such a broad, amorphous bill out of the gate. Everybody is in favor of no discrimination. Like there's nobody who says, discriminate. let's have discrimination in tech and AI. Like nobody is in favor of that. But the gist of the bill and the biggest problem with the bill, in, in our opinion, is it creates a proactive regime where you, as somebody using AI, and that needs to be kind of more, more specified and everybody agrees on that, need to do something proactive to say, I'm going to go to the state and say, there's no way that my AI can be discriminatory. Okay? That is different than any other business process or practice today. If I have a, a, a company that I've been operating and I have a big sales team, thousand person sales team in Colorado. I used to work at a company where we ran a thousand person sales team and we've got all kinds of training materials for that sales team. I don't have to go to the state and say, here's all my training materials. Here's how I, I, my sales team conducts itself. No, if there's discrimination in how that sales team is operating, that's going to come to light after the fact. And there's lots of laws and mechanisms to enforce that and punish that company and reasons why we wouldn't discriminate in what we do today. So we look at AI as just, it's just another business process that you're implementing on the back end. And the output of that cannot be discriminatory. But to make everybody go proactively register with the state ahead of time creates gigantic headwinds in businesses and innovation and people who are, you know, one of the great things like Magic School, you know, in the most egregious reading of this, which again is not going to happen, somebody like Magic School who gets started on a shoestring couldn't get started. And that's that's why we think thought it was, you know, bad law. But again, I'm very confident that it's going to get um, resolved in a, in a good way. Sorry, long answer to short no, question. No, no, that's there great. You I, there you go. <laughs> Kelly, I think she's a psychologist first, AI <laughs> founder <laughs> second, <laughs> but she has some thoughts. Listen, I also don't want to get up here and talk about a law that's already passed and they're working hard to make it better. But I will say this. I think a lot of people are concerned about this notion of bias. And as a psychologist, Listen, one of the reasons we started Minerva was to tamp down the impact of human bias. 
So at least you have a tool in artificial intelligence that can show us the bias. If we just stay with where we were, then hiring decisions and all these other consequential, consequential decisions are being made without knowledge of any of that. That's just, well, I went with my gut or, you know, I mean, this is how these big decisions are being made now. So I think everybody should be worried about bias. But if you are worried about that, you should be first looking in the mirror and then looking at humans and how we are doing this already every second of the day. So to put laws in place that make it difficult for us to right wrongs is a wrong. And that is why I testified against this bill. I'm not somebody who was involved in politics until this either. And it was very strange to be on generally the political left and be agreeing with the political right on this matter and saying, yeah, this makes no sense. This is not innovative. And it's just a reaction that I think is based on ego. It's somebody who wants to get a name for themselves in the form of Rodriguez. I will say that. So uh, yes, he did some good stuff with privacy laws, but not with this. And the panelists are exactly right. This is squelching innovation in this state. I'm on planes and people are saying, oh, I'm not investing in Colorado now because of this law. So great if the task force can make it better. Amy, I certainly hope you're going to do that. But the rest of us in RMEG, Rocky Mountain AI Inst Interest Group, we're very worried about this. And we hear what happens with task forces not being that changeable that the law's law and to put some window dressing on it may be what happens here. Convince me I'm wrong and I'll be happy for that. But these are all consumers, all of us. I'm a consumer as well as a founder. None of us want the bias, but we want things to get better. And this is why we want AI in the, in the game to help everything get better, to help you have less bias in everything that impacts you. That's what I have to say about that. You know, I was going to add that um, these law, the law passed in May, but by then, uh, the city of Denver already had an AI policy. I believe the state, did you uh, wrap that up in August? Or was that finalized in August? Mm -hmm. A generative AI late, policy. Late, late July, August. Okay. Yeah. So, but when I was talking to Sue, I remember, I mean, you know, their, the city's policy is, you know, we're not going to use this to um, make uh, critical decisions, I believe. Do you want to talk about that more? Like what, you know, ha, ha, this apparently has been a topic of concern um, with consumer advocates, you know, because there's still there's still a lot of big tech out there that seems like they it hasn't been behaving. And I mean, even the Colorado AG, you know, we heard it from him last night and he, you know, he sued Google, uh, Meta and I think TikTok. So. You know, part of this is how much is fear? How much should we um, believe this state is going to take care of us? Um, and anyway, so go ahead. Um, having worked at the state, Tamara, I can tell you that the state does not have enough resources to do this front loading of all the uh, decisions that Adam talked about. We, there's simply not enough resources. They have around 1,800 applications with a hundred things that they're responsible for. So I don't think they, they will have resources to vet this in the way that it needs to, right? So again, where is our human intelligence in all of this? We own our data. We own our biases, right? Like, and we should be doing something about it. The tool is just that. It's a tool. So let's all look at it objectively, right? And use the tool the way it's supposed to be used and use our human intelligence to make the right decisions. That's what we as leaders, are. our people are looking to us to be there to make those decisions in the right way using the right data. If your data is wrong and if it's biased, you'll get garbage out, right? Garbage in, garbage out. It's as simple as that. And you, you can blame technology all day long, but if your people, your policies, your process is not in line with technology, it's one end of the equation. It's not holistic. So that's what, again, let's use, like, you know, the, the Den AI conference was just that, right? We brought educators. We bought, brought academic institutions. We bought, brought the Reed Hoffmans of the world, right? Again, it's to understand from the big tech, are they even thinking about this, right? Are they thinking about sustainability? Are they thinking about ethical considerations? And they truly are. 
and and Reed said himself that you know this is something that I mean, to Adam's point that it's in the intermediate yes long term we all need to be worried about this right and be thinking about this and it's an evolving field right so I would say like let's use our human intelligence in the way that it's supposed to help the people that we are using the technologies and the frameworks for. Let's not blame technology because technology by itself is just a tool. I just want to say one thing to answer because my understanding was uh, big tech in favor of this. <laughs> yeah, big tech in favor of this. Oh, yeah. You know wh wh why? Because big tech is like, hey, if we're happy to go pay millions of dollars in consulting fees and regulation to stop all the all the startups and innovation from happening. So that's something that's a little bit counterintuitive. When we, 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 we heard about this law, we talked to something, they're like, oh, we thought tech was on board with this, right? We talked to Amazon, we talked to Workday, like, yeah, of course they are. So that was something that's a, a little counterintuitive. Yeah, no, that's that's true. And that's why I was thinking, you know, it's really the startups that are um, the test ground for this. I mean, if I remember the first time I used Google, <laughs> uh, was it in the late 90s? And I'd been using Yahoo before that. It was just such a difference. Um, it has, obviously Google has had time to develop and change and do different things. Um, and it seems like this, what seems to be happening here is clamping down on what Google would have been doing back then. You know, I don't know if I like Google today. There's lots of uh, controversy around what they're doing with our data, but um, you know, some of these people are the ones who are making policies that are going to affect all of us. If you're interested in listening to the whole AI task force session, it's going to be next Monday, October 21st at 9 a.m. at the Old State Library. There's also going to be a virtual recording or a virtual meeting about it. So I will try to include a link in next Saturday's What's Working column. But anyway, that's it for me today. Thanks for listening, everyone. And don't forget to read The Sun. You can read more at coloradosun.com. Finally, here are a few stories that you should know about today. Colorado Parks and Wildlife has given up on capturing a fifth wolf pup that was left behind in Grand County when the rest of its pack was relocated last month. The agency said it suspended the search Thursday because of declining temperatures that made it unsafe to move the animal. Wildlife officials saw the gray wolf pup on game cameras in September and tried for 19 nights to capture the pup. It's believed to be the seventh member of a pack that preyed on livestock. If a supermarket mega-merger is approved, Safeway stores in Colorado would be owned by two companies. Neither would be the current owner, Albertsons, which would fade into acquirer Kroger, the parent to King Supers. Kroger plans to take over 14 Safeway stores. The other 89 in the state would find a new owner in CNS Wholesale Grocer. The future of the chains will be determined by an ongoing antitrust trial in Denver District Court. The case is set for closing arguments October 24th. Excel Energy will resume issuing energy efficiency rebates to Colorado businesses after securing permission to dip into next year's budget to fund the program. In July, an Excel subsidiary filed for emergency relief with the Colorado Public Utilities Commission, saying that it had spent most of the $93 million it budgeted for the program. The program is back on after state utility regulators allowed the company to move $34 million from next year's energy efficiency budget to fill the gap. For more information on all of these stories, visit our website, coloradosun.com. And don't forget to tune in again next time. Now, a quick message from our team. I'm Laura Wynott, Director of Membership at the Colorado Sun. I came to work at the Sun because quality, trustworthy journalism is important. As a reader and listener, I find the Sun to be a breath of fresh air. The journalists tell Colorado stories that keep me informed, entertained, and engaged. If you also trust the Sun for your news, join me as a member at coloradosun.com slash join. Your support helps to bring you and other Coloradans the news you deserve. We couldn't do it without you. Thank you.